We're here in beautiful Montreal at McGill University's Medical School. We're at the Center of Oncology where we're going to visit with Dr. Eduardo Franco. Dr. Franco is one of the leading experts in HPV and HPV transmission. And he's the chair of the Department of Oncology. Dr. Franco, if you could start with just a quick explanation of why HPV is such a health concern. HPV or HPV infection, uh, it, uh, it's a major uh, health burden. I mean, we came to, uh, to learn in the last uh, 20 years or so that it's one of the most common among the, all the sexually transmitted infections. It's so sexually transmitted, in fact, that we even stopped calling it as a sexually transmitted infection. It's a uh, contact, skin-to-skin -skin contact. It's a very common, very ubiquitous, very common virus. And it has evolved with humankind uh, for millennia. But uh, now we understand, we're getting a good uh, understanding of the diseases that uh, HPV infection cause, and there are quite many. So you've been traveling the world with your research. Can you tell us a little bit about the impact on HPV on a worldwide basis? Well, it, it is, uh, we're, we're, we're learning now about the overall burden of cancers that are associated with uh, HPV infection. In fact, uh, quite a substantial proportion. And when you think that one out of every 20 cancers in the world are caused by HPV infection, that's quite a, quite a, a, a substantial proportion. And that places it uh, as in good company as smoking. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an important risk factor. So we now, uh, we now know that cervical cancer, all cervical cancers are caused by HPV infection that began some 20 years before in a woman's life. Uh, we're learning also that other kinds of cancer also caused by HPV infection, including oral cancers, certain types of pharyngeal cancers, uh, anal cancer in men and in women, uh, penile cancer in men, uh, vaginal cancer, vulvar cancer. So there's a variety of anogenital cancers and oral cancers that are all together caused by HPV. We're also learning that certain types of HPV infection, not the same ones that cause uh, the anogenital and the oral cancers, uh, different kinds of HPV infection. They also can cause skin cancers. So we're learning more and more about those. So eventually that 5% that I mentioned a minute ago could actually be way more than this. So we're, we're pushing the envelope there. So please tell us a little bit about CATCH. Can you tell us about the study and the scope of it and what you hope to accomplish? Well, CATCH is the acronym for a study we have launched here in Montreal at McGill University and other sister, sister universities here in Montreal. That stands for Carrageenan Gel Against Transmission of Cervical HPV. It's a nice, catchy acronym for a study that we hope uh, uh, will make uh, quite a difference. And this is what we call a randomized controlled trial. And in the randomized controlled trial, women are going to be to receive either, either a Carrageenan Gel or they're going to receive a placebo gel. And eventually, they're going to be free to use with their partners over the course of one one uh, one year. And uh, as they use the gel, we take uh, collect specimens from them, from the, from the women on a on a on a regular basis, uh, initially very often, and then eventually every three months or so. Uh, and uh, w this is all done blindly, so we don't know which women took what. And at the end, we're going to analyze the data to see what the rates of HPV infection are between the two groups: the group that had the carrageenan gel and the group that had the placebo gel. And hopefully, we're going to find. Uh, that's the hypothesis of the study that carrageenan uh, prevents acquisition of HPV infection of one or more types from their partners. So it's a kind of a breakthrough to think that a seaweed extract, which is carrageenan, could actually prevent an HPV transmission. What's actually happening at the body? What is, what's the mechanism going on there? Indeed, and it, it's, uh, it's a very interesting story that actually came from total serendipity. Uh, a, a, a researcher in, uh, in, in Washington, in Bethesda, in the U.S., was looking for a variety of potential microbicides and uh, screening compounds and looking for the similarity of how HPV as, as a virus binds to cells and uh, to, uh, to the epithelium where eventually it infects. They noticed a similarity of that binding site to a sugary uh, uh, receptor. And uh, sure enough, you know, a polysaccharide that's present uh, in, uh, in, in seaweed, uh, carrageenan, eventually happened to have uh, this very high, very potent uh, inhibitory effect against HPV infection in a model, in an in vitro model. So from that point of uh, proof of concept that surely met the biological plausibility of what they expected from moving to a clinical study was just the next, uh, uh, next step. 
So do you have any other studies planned using the carrot gene in gel? Indeed we do, and of course everything hinges on uh, the results we see initially in this, uh, uh, what we call a phase two trial, the CAT study, but uh, the next step would be eventually to, uh, to uh, study the effect of, of the gel of carrageenan in other compounds, for instance in condoms, to add it to a mixture in condoms and the actual lubricant in condoms, so that we can actually, in addition to having the effect against HPV, to complement that with the barrier protection that would also have a contraceptive value as well as uh, value against other, uh, other sexually transmitted agents. Uh, another potential use could be uh, for uh, as a gel, as a lubricant, also for not necessarily in the heterosexual uh, 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 for couples, but couples also, uh, uh, gay couples eventually may want to use uh, which could also prevent HPV infection, which is also known to cause uh, anal infection and eventually the diseases that come from anal HPV infection, such as anal precancerous lesions and anal cancer. I thank you so much for spending time with us today. We really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.